The Pine Phone, also known as in my perspective as the bedrock of mobile Linux. Originally released in 2020 with very low volume of units to ever be sold and a retail price of just 149 US dollars. The Pine Phone is a unique device that kickstarted the mobile Linux concept. Instead of using your typical lockdown iOS or Android ecosystem, you have a choice of several Linux distributions designed to run on a mobile form factor. The Linux distribution we're going to be looking at is Postmarket OS, which in my opinion is the most well polished of all the mobile Linux distros. And since I have spent a good while with it, here are my thoughts about the phone that started the mobile Linux journey a while back. First things first, build quality. The build quality on this phone is quite decent. For its kind, of course, it is built entirely out of plastic, with the exception of a glass display. It has some decent weights, mostly because it is a large phone overall. The Pine Phone comes equipped with a quad-core all-winner 864 processor with the Mali 400 MP2 GPU, 2 or 3 gigs of LPDDR3 RAM, 16 or 32 gigabytes of EMMC flash storage with microSD card expansion, a 5.95 inch HD plus TFT display with a 720p resolution and a 60Hz refresh rate, a 3000 mAh movable battery, a 5 megapixel main camera with a 2 megapixel front facing camera, and of course it can run a variety of Linux distributions. If these specs really do sound unimpressive, that's because it is. After some research, the all-winner A64 is one of those low-powered mobile SoCs released back in 2015. No wonder it feels sluggish. It is absolutely not how Linux on mobile works, and it all depends on the hardware and not the operating system. The Pine Phone comes with a few surprising things such as a USB-C port with video out, which is absent from many Android phones who got mobile Linux support, and a 3.5mm headphone jack. Around the device, it comes with a volume keys, power button, speaker, a rear camera module with an LED flash, and a notification LED light on the front. Another great thing about the Pine Phone is that its back can be removed. It's where you can put a micro SIM and SD card. There are pogo pins where you can add additional hardware like a keyboard case for example. Hardware kill switches so you can sever the power of several things like wireless networks, cameras and microphones, and headphone jack. Surprisingly, the battery can also be removed. Yes, you can remove or replace the battery quite easily. It uses the Samsung J7 form factor battery which you can easily find replacements online and it'll fit nicely. The Pine Phone can make phone calls and sounds good, as well as SMS and MMS messaging. Of course, you can use other means of messaging like XMPP or Matrix integrated into GNOME chats. The cameras are what you expect when you hear 5 megapixels in 2025. It's not good. With so much latency, grain, and lack of focus, it's not what you'll like to use as a camera. The front facing one is much worse. It's 2 whole megapixels. It's good to have cameras on the Pine Phone as it can be used as an open source implementation for other devices without using proprietary bits that the manufacturers put on their firmware. When connected to an external display via a USB-C dock, you can treat the Pine Phone as a full desktop computer, of course with the exception of the fact that it is quite slow. If you're just doing basic browsing with a Chromium base browser, then it should be fine as well as pretty much any ARM compatible Linux application you throw in, and it will just work. Because the Pine Phone was intended to run Linux, there are many different distributions available for the Pine Phone that can be easily installed. Unlike traditional Android phones, which requires unlocking the bootloader and flashing different pieces of software like the recovery image using the ADB and fastboot programs, the Pine Phone is almost plug and play. Similar to something like a Raspberry Pi, you can boot from the SD card or flash the distro to the internal storage. I usually install the distro to the internal storage as it is faster than running it off to an SD card. To do this, you will need a program that treats the Pine Phone as a USB mash storage device using something called Jump Drive. Simply flash the image file to the SD card using Bolina Etcher and boot it off of the SD card. 
connect the phone to the computer, and then flash the distro to its internal storage. Some distributions require booting off of an SD card with another piece of software you have to flash to the internal storage called Toeboot. It allows you to run certain other distros such as Debian-based Mobian and Kali's NetHunter Pro. But what can you do with a Pine phone? Absolutely since there's very little mainstream mobile app support such as what you get on iOS or Android, here are a few apps that can help you get into the mobile Linux ecosystem. Being able to not just send and receive SMS messages, but also with other services such as XMPP or Matrix Chats, there is no need for a third-party client as it is baked into the GNOME Chats app. Taking down quick notes without an internet connection, Paper is exactly what it is, a markdown based note taking app that can fit on a mobile screen. Okay, one solution I found for the missing app ecosystem is of course web apps. With a Chromium based browser, it is quite easy to get it working. Along with a couple extensions for a more mobile experience, web apps from Chromium works best on the Pine phone surprisingly, so I decided to use the Brave browser and install my most used apps there. Of course web apps aren't anything without being able to pin to the home screen. At first I was thinking about making bookmarks inside the browser, but digging around the menus I found an option to create a shortcut. This gives out a more discreet mobile apps experience. It takes a while to load, but when it does, it works just fine. Of course when connected to an external display, you have a choice of running fully fledged desktop apps like GIMP for example. Edit some pictures such as a thumbnail for the video or being able to browse the web on a larger canvas. Limitless possibilities when running desktop apps, just of course as long as it has a native ARM version. There are tons of other apps to explore from the Flagpack repository. Errands is a to-do list similar to Reminders on iOS. Citations manages your bibliographies using the bibtex format. Cartridges is a game launcher for all of your games, and for some reason it works well on mobile. EarTag allows you to edit metadata from audio files. Decibels and Amberol are simple music players with one goal and that is to play music. There are plenty more apps to explore as the ecosystem becomes bigger and more mature. We came a long way since the debut of the Pine Phone, which began the development of mobile Linux. I'm pretty confident that it will be a viable third alternative to Apple's iOS or Google's Android in the next several years as mobile Linux has matured for daily driver material and many Android phones get such support made possible by the community. So, can you daily drive a Pine phone? No, absolutely not. There's no real way to actually use the Pine phone without itself crashing multiple times, overheating, or it really being slow. The Pine phone is definitely not daily driver material, even when it was released back in 2020. The Pine phone really is just a development tool so they could port mobile Linux onto many other future devices. That's why I like to call it the bedrock of mobile Linux. If you really want to have a Linux phone, there are many Android phones you can install on and have a much better experience. Otherwise, there's also the Pine Phone Pro, which is generally faster than the Pine Phone, but also has the same issues as the Pine Phone had. And that's pretty much it of perhaps the first honest review of the Pine 64 Pine Phone. Stay tuned for another episode of Hazel Reviews. Until then, we'll see you in the next one. Thank <laughs> you.